Have you ever wondered how Kubernetes manages pods when the Kubelay service is down? This might seem like a puzzling question, but the answer lies at the heart of Kubernetes' resilience and flexibility. To start, let's quickly touch upon Kubernetes. It's an open source platform designed to automate deploying, scaling, and managing containerized applications. And at the center of Kubernetes are pods, the smallest and simplest unit in the Kubernetes object model that you create or deploy. Now let's add a twist to the plot. Imagine a scenario where the Kubernetes service that usually manages these pods is unavailable. What happens then? Enter the hero of our story, static pods. These are unique pods that have the ability to run without the need for the Kubernetes service, providing a fail-safe mechanism for Kubernetes. Stay tuned as we delve into the fascinating world of static pods in Kubernetes. So, what exactly are static pods in Kubernetes? Imagine Kubernetes as a bustling city. In this city, there are numerous buildings, and each building represents a node. Within these buildings, there are individual apartments, and these apartments are what we call pods. Pods are the smallest and simplest unit in the Kubernetes object model that you create or deploy. They represent a single instance of a running process in a cluster and can contain one or more containers. Now let's dive into the concept of static pods. In the usual Kubernetes setup, the API server plays the role of a city council, managing and observing all the buildings and apartments. However, there are certain circumstances where a building or node might not be connected to the city council, that is, the API server. In such situations, static pods come to the rescue. Static pods are unique because they are managed directly by the Kubelay daemon on a specific node without the city council or the API server observing them. Picture it this way, static pods are like autonomous apartments. They are self-sufficient, capable of managing themselves without needing the city council's oversight. Why is this important, you ask? Well, consider a situation where a node loses its connection to the Kubernetes API server. In such a scenario, regular pods cannot be managed because the API server is not available to send instructions. However, static pods, being independent, continue to function as usual, ensuring that there is no disruption in the services. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Because static pods are not observed by the API server, they don't have some of the benefits that regular pods enjoy, such as being easily scaled or managed through the Kubernetes dashboard. Therefore, they should be used wisely and only when necessary. As you can see, static pods offer a unique and powerful functionality in Kubernetes. Now that we understand what static pods are, how do we create one? The first step in creating a static pod is to prepare a manifest file. This file, typically in YAML or JSON format, contains all the specifications for your static pod. It's like a recipe that tells the Kubelay exactly what ingredients it needs to whip up your static pod. The manifest file includes details such as the name of the pod, the Docker image to use, and any necessary environmental variables. Once your manifest file is ready, it's time to place it in the directory that the Kubelay monitors. This directory is like a stage where the Kubelay eagerly awaits new static pod scripts to perform. The location of this directory can vary based on your Kubernetes setup, so it's crucial to make sure you're placing the file in the right spot. Now, the magic happens. As soon as the Kubelay spots a new manifest file in its directory, it rolls up its sleeves and gets to work. It reads the file, understands the instructions, and then diligently sets about creating the static pod. It pulls the Docker image, creates the containers, and ensures the environment is set up just as you specified in your manifest file. The Kubelay doesn't rest until it sees your static pod up and successfully running. It's like your own personal assistant, ensuring your static pod is functioning exactly as you intended. And there you have it, your own static pod up and running. Let's recap what we've learned today. We delved into the fascinating world of Kubernetes, focusing on static pods. We've understood their distinguished features and how they're controlled directly by the Kubernetes service, not by the API server. We also walked through a step-by-step -step guide on creating static pods, making the process more accessible. And with that, we come to the end of our journey into the world of static pods in Kubernetes. Thank you for watching. For more such informative videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.